Yesterday's quick-fire phone-in uh, only yielded three calls. My mistake. I think panel beating was uh, too narrow a topic. Uh, so today we're going to open it out uh, with the question, what is the best thing? What's the best thing of all? Um, uh, we've, so far we've got uh, Sky Plus, uh, a cup of Brazil nuts. That was amusing. Livestock, valid and wet wipes. That was a, a fascinating uh, call from an elderly lady in Hempton. Let's have some more. Line two. The first smile of a newborn. Ah, who could not like that? Who could not like that, though? Uh, Herod. Yes, Herod. That's right, because he was a baby killer. He enjoyed... Yes, he killed lots of babies. He did. Uh, we don't like him. Uh, line four, Sean. Oh, it's got to be. It's got to be your radio show, Alan. <laughs> oh, you, I, don't, I have no need to... I can, you've saved me a lot of money on toilet paper now because you've already uh, done the job for me, <laughs> as, it, as, it, as it were. You uh, are slicker. Yeah, all right. Well, obviously, that's the implication, you know. Um, line six, uh, Stuart. It's sliced bread. What about sliced bread? <laughs> Sliced bread, it's the best thing, isn't it? That's what people say. They say, it's well, the best thing. Uh, yeah, but sliced bread is. Well, that's a, that's a phrase, but it's not actually the best thing, is it? Can I have a T-shirt? No, no, of course you can't. It's the, that's, that's, um, that's, not, that's just a turn of phrase. Yeah, but it's, just, it's the best thing, isn't it? Because also, it's what people say in the thing. They say, the best thing I know, is sliced I know, bread. I know they say that. I'm familiar with the phrase, but it's just a turn... It's not literally true. Then why do people say it? Of course because it's true. It, it's not... bread is the best thing. It's the best it's, thing. It's stop bread. Keeps, if you keep saying it, sure, it's we, not going to make it any more we all, true. We all know the phrase, we mate. We all know the phrase. <laughs> it's just an idiom. You're an idiot. No, an idiom, not an idiot. You're, you're an, an idiot. No. You're, no, you're an idiot for not knowing what idiom is. It's clearly confused you because you think I've just substituted the T with, with, with an M. You stupid gim. <laughs> Uh, you, or you, you momal mwam. Oh, what you got? Maybe that. Uh, you, yeah, you're, you're a complete cunm. Hmm. Well, I think you're a prick. Right, well. get rid of him. Sorry about that. Uh, we, I should have, I should have uh, knocked him off more quickly. I wasn't quick enough. I and a dick. Shit. Right. Um, right, well, he's, he's gone now, but I'll continue to, to, to speak my mind about him. Stuart, I've got to say, I think the Clifton Suspension Bridge was built for people like you. The fact that you can drive cars across it is a bonus, so do the decent thing. And leave the keys in your car so uh, someone can shift it afterwards. And please don't, don't call in saying I'm encouraging people to kill themselves. Again? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm suggesting that one person throw himself off Clifton Suspension Bridge because he is, and hopefully soon to be was, a very unpleasant individual. Uh, a bit like Jamiroquai. Now it's time for Who Does Alan Think Alan Is? Who do you think you are? Just to explain, the sense of that line was not properly explained to the voiceover artist before she went into the booth. Um, by the time I found out, she was already in a cab. Complete waste of 30 quid. She sounds like she's been touched on a bus. My main guest today is one of the genealogists from BBC One's Who Do You Think You Are? Please welcome Henry Spring. Hello. Our journey begins with your great-grandmother, um, Annie Partridge. Do you remember her? I do, Granny Annie. She died when I was a toddler. She used to make me chucky egg. Uh, egg and butter chopped up in a bowl. Uh, you can add that to your files. Send it to the boys at WDYTYAHQ. Who do you think you are, headquarters? Oh. Um, well, like many women of her time, she was a stay at home mum, wasn't she? she? She was unemployed, yes. Uh, but what you might not know is that if we delve one generation further back, uh, we find she had an aunt who lived quite near here, so that would have been your great great aunt. It's fascinating. Please tell me more. She uh, lived in a semi-detached house in Sheringham at the very end of the 19th century. That must have been one of the first semi-detached houses in Norfolk. Uh, not in Norfolk, but it, it may have been one of the first in Sheringham. But that's still fascinating. It sounds a shiver down your spine. Do you want me to get you up? Rest in peace. Great, great, great aunt. What's her, what's her name? Uh, we don't know. We just have the initial E. Rest in peace, Mrs. E. Was she married? We don't know that either. Oh, well, rest in peace, E. Partridge. 
what was the uh, joke you were going to do? I, do? I was just going to say, shall I go and get you a hot water bottle when you said you had a children in your spine? Oh, yeah. Uh, no, that's good, yeah. I think I was right to stop you there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Henry, I'm right, am I not, that my uh, distant relative was involved in perhaps one of the most important pieces of town planning that Norwich has ever seen? Uh, well, he worked in the office of town planner. Changing what was Deering Square into what is now Deering Lane. Uh, they effectively made it a thoroughfare, yes. I mean, it's just, it's amazing. I mean, the number of times I've parked on that road, never knew. I, mean, I know it's loading only, but you park there after six, uh, they, they never get you. It's... I almost feel like crying. <laughs> Certainly made getting into the centre of town that bit more straightforward. But, and the rest. If, if it weren't for Deering Lane, you'd have to come in on the ring road. I mean, it's just amazing that, 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 a, that an ancestor man had to wrestle with that awful decision. I mean, on the one hand, you know, the square gave people somewhere to sit, a respite from the, from the frenetic pace of life in Norwich. And yet on the other, I mean, direct access to Hobbs Road must have been like the promised land to civil engineers, cutting journey times from the east half of the city in half. It was caught between a rock and a hard place. It must have been ruddy hard. I sent a shiver down my spine. Another one. That's the second one in half an hour. Um, uh, I almost feel like I, I, I should get a hot water bottle to reheat my spine. Uh, so, a quick email here from Samantha, who says that she has fat arms. Oh, oh, Samantha. I mean, a lot of people, so many of you, have a fixation with physical perfection these days. It's because we're bombarded with images of size Absolutely. zero models, an impossible ideal to attain. It is, abso absolutely. Uh, Samantha, I'm sure, I'm sure your arms are absolutely fine. She's, um, she's got an attachment here. So, oh, my God, they are vast. Th wow, Alan. that's. Uh, but she, you've got a lovely face, Samantha. She's got a, she's got a lovely face. Yeah. Uh, I've got to send this to Jonathan Ross. Okay, and uh, yeah, we've got a letter here from Lucinda. Uh, Lucinda says, "I'm 45, but I'm going out with a 23-year-old man. Um, we clicked straight away, but although he's very affectionate, we're yet to make love, and he cannot maintain an erection. And I'm worried it's my fault. What shall I do?" Well, it's actually very common in younger men, much more so than people realise. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, 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 these young men look all well and good uh, in the underpant adverts, <laughs> but uh, when it come, when they hit the hay... It's failure to launch. That, yeah, I like yeah. it. <laughs> sorry, sorry, come in here. What do, what do young women make of it all these days? Mm. Um, well, I suppose... I suppose it comes down to confidence, really, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Cos I think a younger man can be a bit yeah. too eager to please mm -hmm. and end up sort of at sixes and sevens. <laughs> <laughs> um, but And then a, an older man, you know, with some experience, is perhaps a bit more at ease with himself. Yeah. yeah. And, of course, we're very fortunate these days. We have Viagra. Yeah, but although do not exceed the stated dose. So uh, you, you've suffered from that, have you, Alan? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no. Well, a, a lot of men have. I mean, it's nothing to be ashamed of. All right, what, all right, all right, once. But that was only because I had already commenced foreplay when I remembered uh, I hadn't renewed my tax disc. But um, once I put a quick call into the DVLA, uh, lovemaking could begin in anger. I think it's all about making sure the conditions are right, mm. getting the mood right, the atmosphere. Oh, sure. Mm. I mean, I'm not going I'm, I'm, I'm to be embarrassed about this, seeing, seeing as we're being, trying to be you know, grown up about this. There, there, there have been times when I've been more uh, rubbery than turgid. I mean, you can't just summon up uh, tumescence like room service. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I think it's, it's partly down to the woman to sort of help, help set the mood a little, Absolutely. help man relax. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I mean, it's all about mood. Uh, take the phone off the hook, mm -hmm. uh, put on some easy listening, Carpenter's Enya, and, of course, make sure the heating's on. OK. Uh, got another email here from, uh, from Paul in Swatham on forced celebrity breeding. Um, this one is Kylie Minogue and David Dickinson to make an Oompa Loompa. Absolutely. Uh, Minogue provides the size, Dickinson provides the requisite skin tone and expression. <laughs> Let's have some Alison Moyer. Spanning the length of the alphabet from A to Z, it's Alan and Zoe. But mainly Alan. Hmm. You listen to Mid Morning Matters with Alan Partridge and my little pocket ray of sunshine, Zoe Scott. Speaking of sunshine, Alan, have you treated yourself to a sunbed last night? No. What about a spray tan? 
Um, I don't think so. Uh, morning, morning, everyone. You're listening to MMM with ZS and AP or Zap. I do, you've got such a lovely, engaging way with people. You really have. Seriously, it really is very commendable. Thank you. Okay, so, today's. Up, we've got... you're you... in a... <laughs> do you know what? We, <laughs> we're like a, we are like an old married couple. Yeah, pr pretty soon we'll be bickering all the time. You know, you'll be drinking too much. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you, uh, yeah, and then you'll get jealous of my career and run off with a fitness instructor. No thanks. Been there, done that. Got the t-shirt. Uh, well, she got the t-shirt. Got the shirt off her back. Really did. Fucking witch. <laughs> Well, I just found that when she strayed from historical fact into the realms of conjecture, I was all too aware of the author's hand, you know, and that took me out of the story. Uh, apart from that, I thought it was a very good first effort. Yeah, I've got to say, I'm a little surprised, uh, Crispin. I found that Mantle's main characters are scorchingly well rendered, um, and the sharp clawed machinations are presented with non-stop verve in a book that can compress a wealth of eh? incisiveness to an, into a very few well-chosen words. That's just word for word what it says on the back of that's the book. That's my that? book of the week. Uh, that's uh, Henry Mantle's Wolf Hall. Oh! <laughs> can't wait to get my teeth into that. It sounds great. Oh, do you know what? If I'd known you were going to wear that kind of... This kind of pink... I mean, I know enough about colours, but this pink clashes with that pink. Correct? Mm, not clash. It's oh, just it's not quite the same. This is raspberry, definitely. Yeah. What's, how would you describe that? I would say that's like strawberries and cream. It is like... that's it, It's like ice strawberry... It's like, a, it's like a strawberry milkshake. Yes, it is. Like I would milkshake. drink you dry. <laughs> I would drink you dry. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I'm down to your boots. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can I have another? Oh. I'm still thirsty. Oh, Alan, you do really <laughs> remind me of my dad. You, you know, you'd really like him. Well, I've, I, I, I love dads. I've got, I, I, I am a dad. I've got a dad. Well, I had a, I had a dad. Oh, what was he like? What was he like, my dad? Uh, I remember one birthday he bought me this big red cake mm. in the shape of... A uh, 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 space uh, rocket? No. Uh, train? No. Football? Uh, uh, no, it was a rectangle. And um, I, I remember he came up and said, Delivery for Mr Partridge! Oh. I was so excited. Mm. I banged into the table and, oops, the cake went everywhere. Oh. <laughs> uh, my dad uh, walked up to me in his... Blue sixties drainpipe mm. suit with a red bow tie. He insisted on wearing, <laughs> and he said, um, "He said you will never amount to anything." He said, "You're that to me." I was just saying that to a seven-year-old kid. Alan, that's terrible. That's not the end of the story because as he uh, turned round to storm off, he slipped on the cake. Legs went flying, banged his head. He needed eleven stitches, and I was glad. This is a little itty bitty of scritty politics. <laughs>